In addition to our automatic pattern finder, we also have a drawing tool that allows you to select your own swings that you want to analyze. Uh, now to do that, you simply click on the this, this icon here, or simply go down to under your drawing tools and go down to the swing pattern finder here. Now to analyze uh, swings, so for example, say you're visually, you're just kind of looking at, uh, you know, this this mo motion here, this movement here, maybe, you know, either X down to here or here or here, and then a potential D reversal point down here. So say you want to analyze those points. So it's simply just click on the icon, click on where you want point C to be, and then just drag this over to where you want X to be. And you can see, uh, depending on where X is, it shows different uh, different potential patterns here. Now, let's see. So you can see right there, all the way down to here, and you could quickly kind of change where you want point C to be. And they're like, well, there's nothing valid there. Move point X to over here. Um, move that back over here. And if the, if it does all the calculations for you, just based on you telling it where X and C to be, is you, you it will automatically find point a point b do all the calculations make all, all the um, the comparisons to the defined patterns and determine if anything is valid based on those defined patterns now in, in other videos we've kind of gone over you know how to create custom patterns and uh, going through creating custom patterns you can also easily see how you could change the existing uh, built-in patterns, but it's a little bit outside of the scope of this particular uh, video. Uh, in this video, I just want to go over um, the parameters and just kind of what, what the, this tool can do and how you actually use it. Um, so I'm going to first just right-click and go to the properties of it, or I can simply double-click the drawing object itself. I'm going to hide some of the, you know, the common things like the general and the data and actually go to the parameters of this um, this tool itself. Um, now, you can see here, uh, as you may have noticed when I was dragging this around, it was snapping to the highs and the lows of the bars. If I uncheck that, hit OK, I can now, it doesn't grab onto the bars anymore. I can just move this, kind of free, freely move this where I want it to be. Um, most of the time, you'll want it to be you know, attached to the highs and the lows of the bars. Uh, the pattern definitions, you can go in there, change all the existing uh, patterns there, change their names, create new, etc. Uh, as you can see, the, the the bullish and the bearish colors, it's just the color scheme of the patterns themselves. Uh, the border, you see this little the M and W uh, movement here. You can see the lines. You can you can hide that if you'd like it to be uh, just a little more, a little simpler, a little cleaner. Um, now, if I hit OK, it's going to probably, no, it, won't, it didn't do it. Um, I was going to say, it's going to snap to the bars since I kind of adjusted that there. But um, so you can see that the it got rid of that M and W, those lines there, if you want it to be a little simpler. Um, so let's see. You can change the opacity of these wings here. If you want those to be pretty transparent, you can, you can you know, keep bumping this down to kind of lower and lower, or if you want them to be like really, really strong and bold, much more visible, you can adjust that like there. Um, now the trigger line is when, when price actually hits the edge of our, uh, our range here, you see it says five and 30 bars. So let me have a pattern that it actually hits the, the T bar there. So in this example here, it hits the line, and then it draws out this, the, this these measurements there. And you can see that it's a, little, it's a little bit thick, and then it gets thin. So the thickness is five bars, and then the thin line is is 30 bars. That's just kind of a window of time where you'd really like to see an entry within those first uh, the first five bars. Uh, or perhaps within 30 is, is you're starting to get a little bit uh, old of a pattern and uh, really some 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 caution needs to be to be used there but it's just kind of a 
just a little uh, measurement, a little scaling uh, to show uh, of time there, but you can adjust um, that on or off, adjust the color of the line. Um, now time segments uh, is something that uh, is, is something custom that I've created. This is something that is uh, proprietary. That's, it, it looks at the X, A, B, C, uh, the, the amount of time between these, um, these points, and it, it kind of determines um, some, some, some scaling as far as uh, uh, when you would kind of expect there to be some, some reaction, kind of the, the rhythm of the movement here. And you can see that uh, you have your T-bar here, and, and the, the, points, the points that it's really highlighting is, is right there and right here and then out here. These are just kind of multiples of this initial segment. And this is kind of showing, um, you know, segments of time, when to kind of look for a potential reaction, uh, hope, you know, either, either for entry or timing of hitting targets. Uh, it's just, it's just something, uh, interesting to look at here. Now, this might be a little confusing the way this is outputting because there's outputting actually two patterns at the same time. So, so what I can do is I can actually come in here, go to the patterns, I'm going to disable this top one by simply going to there. And so you can see it's the G786, 786 referring to the uh, XAC or XAD retracement here. I can hit OK, hit OK, and we just refresh my, reload my chart here. And so it, it disabled that one pattern just to keep it a little cleaner here. Um, going back into my, my parameters. So that's what the time targets are. You can, um, disable that if you'd like and you can play around with it and just see if it's uh, if it's a value for you if it's if it's or if it's adding too much clutter to your to your chart uh, next is a uh, suggested X this is also a proprietary thing this is also um, only for the drawing tool you can see it outputs these uh, these gray X's here and this is also using Fibonacci time based on uh, what you've already told it and, it and it and it swings it's just kind of giving you some suggestions of where to put x put x right there or right there or right there now it's it doesn't necessarily mean that there will guarantee to be a pattern there it's simply looking at fibonacci time to kind of kind of determine you know what is the best uh you know uh, am, am, amounts of time backwards from point a that would make sense for an X to fall. And so, um, again, there doesn't necessarily mean a guarantee that it will be a valid pattern at that point, but it's just, again, it's a timing, uh, Fibonacci time thing. Uh, again, that can be, and that can be, uh, disabled or, uh, by this little checkbox here. Now these, these next, this next section is all about the labels. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for example, you have the, size of the labels themselves if you want them to be smaller or larger um, the the actual the actual x a b c d uh, labels themselves you can have those to be to be larger uh, the the fibonacci labels these these little numbers here that that output all of the uh, you know the tracements you can adjust that size where you want the x a b percentage to be this x to a down to B, where you want that to appear, whether you want it to be on the line itself right there or on the B label, which will appear right there if you want that, that percentage to be, to be right there or completely turn it off. Uh, similarly, for the um, ABC retracement, if you want that to be on the line or uh, on, the, on the C point there or completely disable it, uh, BCD, uh, the retracement there, is is this this number right here the xad um the percentage and the price if you would like that to be you have the percentage right there and if you'd like the price to be over here on this label here that's the xad uh, at d if you just wanted to simply say d if you want it to be explicit that this is x a b c d you can have that output on the label uh, the name itself, if you want to simplify it and, and hide the, the, the actual uh, pattern name, if you just want to treat all the patterns as, as equal and, and you don't necessarily care what pattern it is, you just want to simplify your output, you can, you can disable that. 
uh, this showing this is this is how the PRZ uh, is um, calculated. This is this is looking at these various relationships, the symmetry, uh, the BC projections here. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and turn all these on and we'll take a look at it. You can see here this this is outputting the uh, this is the BC bracket range right here. So that is based on this pattern right here. It's looking at the BC and it's this is the BC range for this particular pattern. And uh, in order for it to be valid, this this the bottom level of this uh, our PRZ must fall within that range. Uh, we know it does because the pattern actually appears. It wouldn't appear if it wasn't valid. Uh, next is showing the the closest uh, the BC level right here that falls within this range, and also the symmetry um, the, the the symmetry level. Uh, you can see this this dotted line, which is basically A B, and then it's it's projecting down from point C in both time and price. So this this line is going down at an angle that A and B is going down to, and this also falls right there. Now, all of these are, is, is this is just kind of get, showing you what's happening under under the covers, uh, all the calculations and things that it's doing, but to simplify the output, you can you can turn these things off uh, just, to, just to have the simple uh, reversal area, because this is, this is really what you, what you care about. Um, and then further, you can, turn off the, the stops if you don't want this to output. If you got your own method for determining stops, targets, same thing. You can, you can disable those. Um, the risk to reward can get outputted here. This is based off of, um, now, to, to truly calculate risk reward, it really determines on what your entry price is. Uh, now, it it doesn't really have the ability to determine, you know, where you uh, you got in or not. So it's it's really basing it off of this lowest point here, this lowest price here, down to the stop. What is that that distance compared to target one and target two? And that's what it's giving you these risk rewards. So if you actually got in somewhere, you know, up here, then obviously your stop would be much further than your first target so your risk reward wouldn't necessarily be um, very good uh, so the this this is it's, it's kind of difficult to calculate because of that reality of trading but uh, so that can be enabled there just to just get an idea of what we're talking about as far as those risk reward uh, ratios go um, again pretty straightforward the text color here being white uh, if you want these labels here to be semi-transparent, you can make those, uh, of course, very faint. If you want them to be very, you know, hidden, uh, then of course the, the the size of the font. And if you would like these lines to to extend all the way to the right of the of your of your chart, uh, and that you can enable or disable that right there. Now the parameters for the the auto swing finder are for the most part exactly the same uh, it all the same uh, labels and the same parameters that we went through before uh, it's all it's all basically the same so you should be very very um, familiar with with those now this pattern definition this one parameter is shared between the drawing tool and the automatic pattern finder so if you m make a modification here it will affect the other tool as well. And that's, that's by design because we want them to be consistent. Uh, okay, well, I hope that uh, answers your questions and hopefully that, that uh, gives you a good explanation of how to use the, uh, the drawing tool. Um, if you have any questions, please email me at daniel at uppdnn.com. That's daniel at updown.com. And best success in your trading.